Hey there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and creative homes. In this week's video, we're traveling to Washington to take a tour of Amanda's tiny home. Imagine having the ambition to build your own first home when you were in your early 20s. Well, after years of saving, working multiple jobs, and building on the weekends with her father, Amanda was able to design and create her first home. And of course, because I'm featuring it on my channel, it's tiny. If you like videos like this, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time I publish a new tour. But right now, let's meet Amanda and take a tour of her home. My name is Amanda and this is my tiny house. What made me interested in tiny homes is the simplicity of the lifestyle. On top of that, also just the affordability, like being my age, living in Washington State, it's not easy to have your own place. If I was living in this town in an apartment, I would be paying at least $1,300 a month, if not more. So this is not only like a lot cheaper, it's also something that I can call my own and that I could keep. I am 23 years old. I started building this house when I was 21 and this is the first home that I own on my own. I came up with the design for this tiny house just off of kind of getting inspiration from other people's designs. My dad's really good at construction and I just told him my vision and he was able to help me bring it to life. It took me about two years to build this tiny house before I moved into it. It was me and my dad, you know, both on weekends, after work, before work. He taught me everything as we went along and now I can say that I could build a house if you wanted me to, which I don't think I would ever want to do it again, but I can. <laughs> One thing I'm really grateful for is my dad for doing this with me. He took two years of his life to devote all of his free time to helping me, which I could have never done this without him. I really appreciate all the time that my dad has put into helping me on this project in this home. The cost of this house with it fully furnished, probably 35 to 40,000. How I afforded to be able to build this house and everything is honestly just working my ass off. I've worked all throughout high school, all throughout college. I was able to save up a lot of money also because I lived with my family for most of that time. I've been living in my tiny house for about five months now. How I found this property was kind of through a friend of a friend. I pay 600 a month and that includes water, sewer, garbage, Wi-Fi. Eventually the goal is to buy property and put my home on the property so I don't have to pay rent or I pay towards the property I get to keep. But for now I'm spending a lot less per month than I would be if I didn't have a tiny house. This is the outside of my tiny house. It's on a 26 foot trailer with a two foot overhang. So it makes it a total of 28 feet long and the width is just under nine feet. The trailer is from Iron Eagle Trailers, which they make trailers specifically for building tiny houses on. For the siding of my house, I went with corrugated metal as well as wood. I liked the clean, sleek look of the metal, but I also wanted to add a little more like spunk to it and make it a little more like pop. And so that's why I went with the stained cedar up front. I put a good amount of windows on my house just to let in a lot of light and kind of make it feel a little bit bigger. They're all just standard size windows that I ordered. So this is my porch. It's a new addition as of about a month ago and I'm so glad I did it. I like to hang out here, eat breakfast out here all the time, which is fun. But I also move these off to the side and I do my yoga here in the morning. Along with adding on my porch, I also added on a tiny garden for my tiny house. I just have a few different like fruits and vegetables. So I have some strawberries here zucchini those are going to be brussels sprouts i got to put them in another pot cucumbers and so that way i just have some fresh fruits and veggies for my house 
This is also where my utilities are. So my sewer and water hookups are over here. I have my propane tanks up front of my house. And then I have a hot water heater on the back of my house as well as the power. So now we're in my tiny home and the first spot is my living room. So over here we have my couch. I got it off of OfferUp, but it's originally from Ikea and you've probably seen them in tiny houses because it has so much storage. I keep extra sheets, blankets, duffel bags in here. Whenever I have guests over, I just move my coffee table out of the way and it pulls out into like a full futon bed. So it's the perfect guest bed whenever I have people over. Back behind here is just like a bunch of random books and blankets and things, but I do have a projector since I don't have an actual TV in here. It projects to the other side and I can set up a screen over my kitchen and I can watch movies, Netflix, whatever there, which is perfect. Down here, my coffee table is another spot where I have storage, which is nice. So I have random little storage in here. And then this is also where I'll like eat dinner. So this is the smaller of my two lofts and I kind of use this as my gear loft. My main hobbies are backpacking, hiking, climbing. So all of that stuff is here. So I have like all my tents and sleeping bags and everything here, snorkeling gear, rock climbing gear, slack lining, uh, all like my backpacking food is here. And then over here, this shelving is kind of used as like a divider to the downstairs area. But then I also have like all my art stuff in here. So all these pull out into drawers. I have like all my paint brushes and lots of books and journals, all sorts of stuff in this area. On the other side of my ground floor is my kitchen. So I wanted a lot of space in my kitchen because I do really like to cook and bake. So I have a lot of counter space. I did the butcher block, which I just like the style and the look of it. The open shelves I have here, I just think it's fun. My sister-in-law has open shelves in her kitchen and I was kind of like inspired by her. I mean, with the jars with all like my sugar and rice and things in it. But I just kind of like the open design and kind of show off some of the stuff that I have in here, the nicer things at least. <laughs> we have a RV stove. So I have my three burners. It is a propane stove and oven. The oven's just big enough for a small pan, nothing too crazy. Probably not gonna be <laughs> cooking a turkey in here on Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, microwave, originally, I wasn't sure if I was gonna do one, but I use it way too much, so I do have it down here. It's easy for me to bend down and get to it, but I know some people don't like that. <laughs> uh, air fryer is kind of my go-to. I use that more than I use my oven these days. Plenty of cabinet space everywhere no shortcomings in the cabinet space. My fridge and freezer is pretty big as well. I never really have it completely full. I don't even know what's in here right now. Um, so there's a lot of space. One of the main things that I wanted with my cabinets was a big pantry. Um, and I really liked the pull-out pantry. So I, I splurged a little bit to get the pull-out drawers. Um, and it makes it just like a lot easier to get to everything that I have in my pantry, which I really like. I got the cabinets through a small cabinet place south of Seattle. It's called Essence Cabinetry. They do like warehouse cabinets I and mean, you kind of just pick and choose from their warehouse. So it was a lot cheaper than a lot of other places that I got quotes for, um, which turned out very nice. And they're really high quality too, which was great. This is my sink from Ikea. But one thing that's fun is, uh, if you can see, it turns like blue when the water's cold. I mean, like as soon as it gets hot, it turns like green and then red, which I thought was a fun, fun little thing. I upgraded my sink for that. <laughs> and I, I chose a big sink just because the one thing I don't have in my kitchen is a dishwasher. So I wanted a big space so that it wasn't like a pain to wash all my dishes. And then back here, we have my bathroom. <laughs> My vanity and sink area, I actually got it. It was like one of the displays at Lowe's and it's kind of beat up a little bit. So they gave it to me for really cheap. So that was kind of a score because I wanted like the barn style door down here. And that was the main reason why I wanted this. 
I also did like a little pocket in the wall here. The idea was that I could like have all of my like toiletries and things in there. Another thing is I just have a full size washer dryer, just regular home washer dryer. And I don't regret it because I do a lot of laundry and I didn't want to have to deal with going to the laundromat or having like a really small one. And it, it fits in the space pretty well. So I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Over here, I have my corner shower. I was a little worried about the corner shower to be too small. I was thinking things like shaving my legs, I wouldn't be able to like bend over, but it is big enough. Um, a lot of the accents in my house are green because I have a lot of plants and so I wanted to kind of match that with my tile. Me and my brother tiled this shower together. Tiling is uh, not my jam, that's for sure. It took a while and you know, it's not perfect, but it, it looks good and I'm very happy with it. But tiling is, it's a long process. <laughs> and then back behind the door here is just the toilet area. So. Regular toilet, regular plumbing, like any other house. I assumed I would mostly be on a property that would have sewer. And so with that, I just went to a regular toilet. And it's also something that I could always change. Like if I end up somewhere that doesn't have it, it's not the biggest deal just to swap out toilets and do something different. But I do plan on always being on a property that has sewer. I decided to go with ladders inside my house instead of stairs. The main reason is because I wanted a lot more floor space. I like to work out and do yoga and this is like kind of the only area I have to do that indoors. And so with the ladder and being able to kind of move it out of the way to the other loft, I have a lot of space to work out. Um, I had it custom made by my aunt and uncle. They have a metal fabrication company and so they made it exactly how I wanted it and customized, which is amazing. Now we're in the main loft, which is my bedroom. I have a full size bed here, so not huge, but also not small, which is perfect for me. And I also designed it to have this skylight right above me. It's cool for multiple reasons. One thing is when I like wake up in the morning, I, I don't hit my head which is nice because I would if I was on either side here. I mean, also at night, like I can stargaze, which is kind of cool. The skylight also comes out and then I can get onto the roof from here as well. And then over here, I have my closet. Um, I have a lot of clothes, so we have a lot hung up here. And then I just have a regular dresser that I bought online and all my clothes either fit here or in the storage uh, cubes that I have kind of as my divider for the wall of the edge of my loft. I decided to do carpet in the loft just because it's cozier just for it being in my room. It's just nice and soft and cozy and since I don't really have that downstairs because it's all the laminate flooring, I wanted that upstairs and my uncle put the carpet in because that's what he does for work so it all worked out nicely. <laughs> a lot more financial freedom living in my tiny house. I travel all the time, so I'm always just being able to pursue my passions, which if I was spending double what I'm spending right now, I wouldn't be able to do as much. I know not everyone has like the support system that I had. It isn't as easy for everyone as it was for me, but I would say if you are really committed to something and you put your all into it, like you can make it happen. Like I spent two years of my life working so much and building this house. For me, that like sacrifice of two years of my life to have financial freedom and live the life I'm living now is like totally worth it. Thanks for watching this week's video. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you soon with another unique home tour.